Hi, and welcome everybody, and thanks for joining us at this, the private view of BAM's online exhibition, Prompted. And for those of you who don't know anything about it, this was an initiative by BAM to help us all during lockdown try to pick up our tools again and get making. And to help me give us a sneak preview tonight of some of the exhibition works, I'm delighted to welcome the keen eye of Miss Kelly Knickerbocker. Thank Hi, you, Jamara. I'm so, so glad to be here. This is really fun. Thank you. So let's go straight into this. And the first prompt was um, to create a coronavirus by Helen Miles. And just to pick a couple of her words, which were fantastic, she said, the virus causing such devastation and destruction is a curiously beautiful thing. And how oh. bright she was. Mm -hmm. So immediately, this one of all the what, images that I was shown, it just jumped out at me. I mean, I just think it's fantastic in terms of overall composition and symmetry. But what I really love is a piece that um, makes me think about how it is constructed. And it, I got to wondering, what, how did she get those little explosions at the outside? And I realized that the solution was, I, they're either spoons or, or forks or something. So the, where the handle is fixed into the main body of the mosaic, but it allows to, that, that extra bit of canvas at the outside, which she's used to such great, um, she's put to such great use. Yes, and, and also with this one, you immediately get the impression of damage. You know, the capacity for damage that this thing has. Things are sharp and look at the potential for damage. You know, sharp things, things that screw in. Um, it looks like one of those dirty bombs that's packed with nails and when it explodes, that's all gonna be embedded in us. So it just gives you that impression of damage infliction potential. So yeah, conceptually, uh, well done. The symbolism is fantastic, isn't it? I mean, the idea of the way that the coronavirus comes into the body and attaches itself is all there. I, lo I really love this piece. And that goes for this one too. Uh, I mean, the selection of materials in this is really Brilliant. interesting. I, I particularly love, so looking in, don't you just love that the red bobbly bits that are sticking out are actually what we call roll plugs and I think what you call anchors. And those are the things that stick into the walls and uh, really make sure that things hold. And that again, the symbolism of that is just fantastic, isn't it? It's, it's excellent. And also the other material being the opposite, being the receptacle um, that something is going to fill that. It's just waiting to come in and be filled and be connected. Those are connectors. And so it's going to be connected with our, you know, something inside the body. So yeah, conceptually again, just well done. Well, well done. So effective. Scary. And for something a little bit different. Yes, this one just this one just goes right into me. It feels like rather than those a lot of hard materials, it feels ephemeral and it reminds us that that you can just breathe this right in, right? Like you could just breathe this thing in. Exactly. That green that green kind of fuzzy bit around it reminds me of the sort of bubbling smoke that comes out of cauldrons. Yes, it's pure evil, pure evil. <laughs> so this prompt is Go Small by Rachel Zager. And these are just some tiny pieces. Uh, and again, a fantastic collection of responses, I think. Yes, and I'm, I'm so impressed. You know, we're kind of having to guess what size they are because we don't know. But what impresses me here is that in all of these, there are so few tesserae used to tell each story. So here in this one, there's maybe a hundred tesserae, and yet we see a, a story, a a, um, a cityscape. We something is made that we can read from just that few number of tesserae, which is so challenging in these tiny pieces. It's great, isn't it? And oh. similarly in this one, I mean, I just love the the detail 
like mm. you say, in just such a so few pieces that um, she creates that beautiful scene. And I particularly love the outside, ex the additional layer of the leaves, as if you're Absolutely. looking into a secret view of a space. And I know we're all going to run right out and buy sardines because <laughs> we've got to make that. It's so, so inspiring. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> oh, this one. Oh. I just... <laughs> I just adore this because concept, material, idea, again, we don't really know the sizes, but this one tells us what it is. It's a ring box. And so I'm assuming that is an engagement ring. So commitment and promising forever. And so the materials chosen to be those hard, durable materials showing us the ring. So the promise of durable commitment, you know, that marriage of idea. And I agree. Excellent. This one's forever, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we hope. <laughs> ah, so what a riot is going on on top of this tiny nail head here. This one's awesome. Yes. I love the way the um, gold that's supported by that blue glass, the, even the blue glass is allowed to shine. Yes, and it, it's... it's and it's, it's really shown up by that very strong black um, yes. cement underneath yeah. it. It's fantastic. Yes, it's as if, it's as if they took the nail and, and just ran it through some tar and then yeah, just put right. beautiful gold into it. It's, yes, it's very lively and, and uh, immediate. And I just to, wanted to point out the importance, especially a presentation I just think this is it's not just about that nail which is pretty yes. amazing but it yes. has the other element there as well yes and the and the way the gold is used in both of them so different ways showing up different things you really see the blue glass in the gold on the nail but then in the other fastener that's on the block the the gold is uh, more prominent and the blue glass is you know into the into the mud Correct. And well I think this, this particular piece really shows up the importance of incredible photography. Mm. You know, that close up picture, she she really envisaged that well. And we got such a good view of it. It was fantastic. So let's move straight on to the next prompt, which is Team Up by Marion Shapiro. And let's not forget that this of course was done over lockdown. So the team up part of it involved a postal service somewhere along the way. And uh, I'm, I guess a fair amount of discussion and understanding, or who knows, it's for us to speculate how they went about this, isn't it? Yes, and, and I, I, how challenging, right? To be the one who's sending off your stuff for somebody else to do something with, or right. receiving receiving something and having to add on and find um, balance, cohesion, relationship. I mean, it's all about the balance, right? So that so that each addition is important but not dominant, right? There's a this is a conversation. It is um, it's equal. So right. so finding that magic, and I think they really did. They, these are conversations, and they're they're beautiful conversations. Again, the the variety of responses is just fantastic. It is. Um, we, we it was hard to pick. We've just picked a couple here. So this one, I just uh, I mean, this jumped out at me too. It's I find it hard to work out who you know where the dividing lines are. Yes. And um, I just think whoever responded to whom um, really picked up the vibrancy of the other material, even though yes. one is stone and one is really. I don't think the photography does it justice, but there's some glitzy, there's a lot of glitzy materials in there. There's some reflective materials, there's mirror, there's yes. yeah, some glass, there's all sorts of things next to that very chunky stone. You know, it's uh, I really like the way this piece is constructed. And, and again, with the balance, right? Because they're disparate materials and, and yet they are so well balanced because they're both kind of loud in their own ways. Like yeah. the stone is, the stone is heavy and strong, um, but the glass is bright and has shine, and they just found a way and is more flowing. You know, the stone is yeah. more chunky, 
and they just found ways to just balance those and make them just really have equal voice and it is so much fun to look at these and try to imagine start finish this right. one one who did it first who knows it's just fun to wander around in there and try to figure it out it's great really great a great response so, um, well, let's, I think we should push on because we haven't got long, have we? So let's move on to the next um, prompt, which is by you, Kelly. So yes. uh, I think I'd just really like you to give us some insights as to how different people responded to your, to your prompt, which was transitions. Yes, just transitioning from one thing to another, whether it's size, color, shape, idea, whatever. And um, I won't go on too long about this one because you'll hear more about it um, when I talk about, when I pick my favorites um, okay. uh, a little bit later in the presentation. So, um, but I just adore this. I love the mix of materials and um, there's more than one transition going on. And I'm just gonna leave that with you and let you just think about, uh, the viewers think about what the two transitions are on this one. I love this one because it's not just a transition of uh, materials, uh, like you know, from the porcelain, the glass, and color. It's it feels to me. I don't know if it is, but it feels to me like a, a story of a transition of a family, perhaps generations. There's a movement. There's a story happening about people here, and that's that overlay of that with the actual transition of earth water, sky, and the different colorations going on and that strong tree coming up the middle. Um, just lovely interpretations and always bonus points for more than one transition happening. Uh, in art. That, that's tricky, it's challenging. And uh, it is, yeah. so many yeah. lovely responses here. Uh, this one just makes me happy. Um, I, I love the idea of the sort of rag rug approach where you just grab all kinds of different materials and just begin to string them together and then just pick a material like they did here with the black that's just the continuity material that comes in between materials and then just repeat uh, randomly and look at the continuity that appears, you know, the grace and the continuity that appears with that kind of repetition and just random stuff. Yeah, I just this love. would be a great challenge for a beginner, you know. It would be, and it would be a great challenge for, for a professional, you know. It's a, Absolutely. It's a great piece to interweave yeah. those lovely, you know, all sorts of different material. And you could use anything, couldn't you? Anything, anything. And it's just happy. It's just yeah. happy. So this one for me, I just, the more I see it, the more I love it. Um, again, because of the dual transition thing here, you have the, the mm -hmm. light color at the bottom and then the bright at the top. And also at the bottom, you have organic. This is all organic sea kind of earthy things. And then up top, it's more man-made um, and the more harsh brights. Um, so there's a transition there. And then in between, this is one of the part that I think is brilliant. In between is that hunk of wood, which is a natural material, but it is human impacted. So it's both. It is the transition between the organic and the natural and up top with the man-made. So, cause it is both, it contains both. So that, it, that could be a bit of a boat, right? Or a bit of a fence or something, like you say, that's been manipulated by man. Yes, and this is part of our joy is that we just get to wander through and guess and speculate till the cows come. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite lovely. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So now we are into our next prompt, which is One Thing by Julie Sperling. And I think this is a bit of a challenge, isn't it? But, Absolutely. But yeah. Oh, my goodness. Just to use up every little speck of one single thing. But this person, whoever did this, they made this thing, whatever this one thing was, sit up and bark in like 10 different languages here. <laughs> this is amazing. The shaping, every part, the rims, the foot, the, the circles, the squares, the edge, the, ah, the striping. It's just, ah, I it's that. brilliant. I think they, they did a brilliant job. And not like it looked like a particularly interesting mug or bowl before, yeah. right? But look at what came out of it. And I love the fact that, that the, even the chips at the bottom, you feel like yeah. the table was cleared, right? And those last little chips were created. Yeah, that wonderful little thing at the press bottom. it in. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 
And again, this, I just feel like this was a smashed bowl or a smashed cup. And yet each piece has been collected up and used to such fantastic effect. Yes, it's actually been given, um, it's been given a story because uh, they took the, the design, which is those sort of Lesko cave animals, yeah. and they created, they created an environment for them to roam free. You know, there's mountains and hills and sky and river or fields or whatever. So they created story out of this one thing. I think that's the, the vision of that and the, the contextual, not just technical, but conceptual, um, bringing that to life is just, uh, I'm inspired. I'm very inspired by this one. Me too. And I love the way that every, all the different elements of the, yes. whatever the original piece are used, you know, so especially Absolutely. you've got the handle there, which looks so effective on its side. And yeah. then you have the, um, the, is it the, what, what do you call it? The foot, you know, yeah, where, the foot the protection. The white that's offset and obviously has texture. I mean, it's just, yeah, I love and, it. And the rims, the rims that have, the, that they're slightly slanted, so you can see yeah. that they are purple and black, you know, yeah. so it brings the two together in that one. I just, oh. <laughs> <laughs> love it. So our final prompt was um, by Marion Shapiro and it was called Monochrome. And this, is, well, I've just included this in, in our comments because it's, it's important, right? Quick, yes, quick because I, I, I want to point out that this is a bit of a cheat because <laughs> it's not literally monochrome because it has a bit in that grayscale, it has a bit of red, a bit of blue, a bit of yellow. And those little bits are, I mean, it's a lesson for us that those bits are so powerful in monochrome when yes, you have yeah. a little bit of the other. And so she has, I just want to point out before we look at the rest that, that she has opened the door for a little bit of cheating in the monochrome. So, and, and people think, took her up on it. I think, what you said about, <laughs> I think what you said about how powerful the color is, is, is a yes. really important thing. Like even just the one, the tiny little dots that are in there yes. become it's very, the very strong, don't they? It's the other, whatever the other is becomes yeah. hugely important. So yes so, so, uh -huh. a purple piece hmm, hmm. mostly purple <laughs> but aha uh <-huh. laughs> look at the green <laughs> it's great another it's a good so even the grout is purple in this so i love that yes yes it, it's a it's a really good um i mean they followed exactly her her uh, invitation and it's a lovely use of all these different shades of this reddish violet purple and then of course the greenish blue just really pops yeah lovely well done and ah. this, so here we really are <laughs> this is a proper monochrome yeah yes pure pure um letter of the law here just yeah. absolutely stripped down to the essence of monochrome not even a range but just the pure one tone and, and so this is hugely challenging because you have to rely on, you can't rely on color for differentiation. So you have to rely on shape and size and direction. Um, all of those things that, that uh, you know, you, you can't lean on color. So you have to do all those other things. And I think this piece has leaned on all those things and to make a, a very readable, beautiful story. I'm, I'm incredibly impressed. Right. I mean, isn't it, isn't it amazing that just uh, just a tiny little bit of extra space around those main elements makes them hugely visible and totally readable. And yeah, I, I'd like to, to home in on that a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Oh, look, look at that because it becomes, it becomes a, um, I mean, the space is a brilliant, a brilliant usage in monochrome because it's all about light and shadow, right? Which is something, another tool you have in working with monochrome. So by leaving this channel around as an outline, light does different things. There's shadow in there, it's a canyon, and the light comes in and goes a bit darker. So it makes a perfect contour, just really, really smartly done. Yeah. Yeah, really great. Well, <laughs> this one just makes me 
think, oh, what a joy it was to make. I mean, on the rainy days that we've had here recently, I can just imagine that I would have been super happy to sit in my studio and pull this one together. I mean, it's really, it's a, it's a, a fun piece, isn't it? Yes, and it takes advantage of like a full range. Like it's such a contrast to the last one, right? Where there's just one color, not a range. And here you yeah. have almost every kind of rust and you know that deep bricky red that you can imagine all put together. Shapes, uh, squares, uh, random shapes, stripes, circles, you know, organic. It's just, it is joyful. It is really joyful and just reminds me how beautiful that color range is and just a bit of shine to differentiate because so many of the tesserae are matte. Did you notice that? Yeah. So much is matte. So those little bits of shine and iridescence just, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I've quite often looked at, you know, this, this terracotta color. And yeah. sort of, you know, put it off to one side because I yeah. thought it was too boring or too whatever. And yeah. yet here it is just celebrated, you know, even those lovely pebbles and the way they're surrounded and yeah. the pieces are laid and they're made to have importance, aren't they? You know, yes. without yes. the pizzazz, although there's a tiny bit of, of glass and, and other things in there, that, you know, without that sort of pizzazz that glass has, the terracotta is really given its chance to shine here, isn't it? It is. And it really <laughs> makes you appreciate warmth. It just feels warm and enclosing and inviting and it's lovely. Yeah. yeah. So that really um, concludes our, our little talk. I'm, I, I wish we had time to go through all of them, Kelly, because it's been such yes. fun. <laughs> So I'd just like to give you a little bit more information about the prompted exhibition. I understand that there are two formats that you can look at it in. So here displayed on the screen, we have um, one format, which is, as you can see at the top, the it's divided into the different prompts and you can click onto them and um, see them like that. But there's also the chance to see it in an amazing virtual gallery. So the second option is to go through a virtual gallery space. And wow, look at this, Kelly. What do you think of that? I, I want to go into each room. I want to go in and just spin around and be surrounded by all of these gorgeous works. One prompt probably in each room. I can't wait. I can't wait to go. And like you said, I want to get past that plant, right? And see what I, I do. What are there? <laughs> it's great. So um, I think just think kudos and huge thanks to our exhibition organizers, um, yeah. Tracy Cartledge and Alita Duran. So thank you. Yeah, they, they really have done a fantastic job. Um, it's, it's really amazing. Um, just this whole setup that we're able to, you know, converse about this bringing all the prompts together into this exhibition um, and seeing different ways to view it. It's wonderful. Yeah. And I have to say, for me, this set of this series of prompts absolutely got me out of my making funk and made me pick up my tools again and and really took me into a new sort of zone uh, of, you know, that coronavirus lockdown. So yeah. I, it, really, it was very inspiring for me. And the ones that I haven't managed to do, I really look forward to doing in the future. I yes, think, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward too to coming back to these prompts That's and using fun. them as jumping off points. They're, they're really wonderful exercises in just small, you know, not a huge commitment, but yeah. small instant gratification, um, you know, just, just punching up, you know, when you're feeling a little um, uh, dry or feeling a little bit stalled. And I, that was the point. And they're really great for that. And they always will be. So it'll be fun to come back to some of them again. I agree. I totally agree. So I encourage everybody watching and anybody else who you can invite along um, to make their way around the exhibition. It really is a fantastic thing. Yes. So thank you so much for joining us, Kelly. And I'm going oh, to hand back to our hosts.